Beams are structural elements that support loads applied transversely, which produce a combination of shear and moment along the beam. Sometimes the steel beams support a concrete slab on top, and in this case, the steel beams can be designed as a non-composite or as a composite beam. This is Javier Encinas, and today we're going to discuss an overview of the engineering background in the design of steel and composite beams. When the concrete slab and the supporting beam are not connected, they work independently and the beam is designed as a non-composite steel beam. But when the two elements, the concrete slab and the supporting steel beam are connected together, they deflect as a unit and the stiffness and the strength are increased substantially. Since the shear connectors are not expensive, the composite construction is advisable in most cases to increase the capacity of the system. The construction sequence is important in the design of composite beams. Initially, during the construction phase, the concrete doesn't work in composite action with the steel beam, and the steel alone has to resist the construction loads, which consists on the beam itself, cell weight, and the concrete slab cell weight, and the construction light load, basically the workers. Then when the concrete hardens during the service of the structure, the composite beam has to resist the final loads, including the cell weight of the beam, the slab cell weight, dead load, and light load. Typically, the shears and moments during this stage are much larger than the uh, shear and moments during the construction phase. But in this case, it was resisted only by the steel beam, and in this case, all the shears and moments are resisted by the composite beam. So it's important to recognize these two stages in the design of composite beams. This stage during the construction, just with a non-composite steel beam, and this final stage during the service of the structure where uh, the composite beam resists the final uh, loads during the service. During the construction state, the steel beam is not composite. The design of a steel beam is affected by the distance between lateral support, which is called the embrace length. This chart relates the nominal fractural strength of the section versus the embrace length. There are a couple of things that we need to note in this chart. First, that for small embrace lengths, the controlling limit state is yielding, which means that the section is fully plastified and the maximum moment is the plastic moment. This is the maximum capacity of any section. The second thing is that the, as the embrace length increases, the flexural capacity decreases. And the controlling limit state is lateral uh, torsional buckling. Another thing to consider in this chart is the calculation of the CV factor. This factor takes into account the shape of the bending moment. This line represents the CV equal to 1.0, which is conservative. So the calculation of the flexural strength of a section in a, in a given segment of the beam depends on the embrace length at that segment and also the calculation of the CV factor. So it's important to calculate correctly the bending moment diagram in the segment that we are analyzing in order to calculate correctly the flexural strength. In order to achieve a composite action, some shear connectors need to be provided between the concrete slab and the supporting steel beam. The function of these uh, connectors is to uh, take the horizontal shear at the inner face between the two elements. When the section is fully plastified or if the concrete slab is fully stressed to the maximum compressive strength, the section is fully composite. If this is not the case, it's called partially composite. Usually the concrete slab is poured on top of a metal deck. When the metal deck is perpendicular to the steel beam, the portion of the concrete under the metal deck is neglected in the calculations. But when the metal deck is parallel to the steel beam, the full section of concrete is considered in the calculations. These images show the plastic stress distribution in a typical composite beam for two different conditions. One is for plastic stress in the positive moments, and the other is for negative moments. When a beam is loaded, the flexural capacity is achieved by the action of two internal forces, one in tension and one in compression. For the positive moments, the tension is provided by the steel itself, 
This is the plastify section in, in tension. And the compression is provided by the concrete slab. And depending on the position of the neutral axis could be also a portion of the compression provided by the steel itself. So the moment is provided by the action of these forces, tension and compression and the lever arm between them. In the negative moments area, the tension is provided by the rebars embedded in the concrete slab and the compression is provided by the plastified section in the steel. For this to happen, the rebar needs to be developed in the slab and also the steel section has to be compact. Alternatively, it's permitted to ignore the contribution of the concrete slab in the calculation and only consider the contribution of the steel section in the calculation of the flexural capacity for negative moments as a non-composite section. This was a brief overview on the engineering background on the design of steel and composite beams. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notification on similar videos like this in the future about engineering topics. Thank you very much for your attention.